word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that he bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciple. This is the gospel of Christ. Shall we bow heads as we pray? Eternal Father, who has spoken in various times and in various ways to your people in the past, but in these last days, in your Son, the incarnate word, I pray that you open my mouth to proclaim that word in the power of the Holy Spirit. I also pray that the same Spirit will open the hearts of your children to receive your word and write on their hearts your holy laws as you have promised. All this, gracious Father, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We want to thank His Grace, the Archbishop of this province, the Most Reverend Dr. Humphrey Bamishebi Ulumokai, who has given us this assignment on his behalf. I want to recognize our church fathers who are already here, starting from the president of this service, the Right Reverend Akepelu Johnson, our Father God, the only Right Reverend Dr. B.J. Adeyemi from Badagri, my own first parishioner from Awori. Our daddy from Egba West, the Right Reverend Samuel Ogundej, you are highly welcome. And all the way from Egba, the Right Reverend Emmanuel Adekunde, you are heartily welcome. Today we are celebrating, celebrating fellowship, celebrating oneness for us to gather as a body from all the four corners of this province. I could see joy, I could see celebration, I could see laughter. Ever since we arrived here this morning, I could see friends identifying friends and enemies identify friends. <laughs> and that is one of the essence of bringing all of us together. We want to look at the team, Anglican clergy in a changing world. And the text is taken from the second letter of Peter, chapter 1, verse 10, which reads thus, Therefore, brethren, be more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do this, you will never stumble. Well, there is nothing happening now in our chaotic and turbulent world 
that has not happened before in the history of the world. And the world becomes more either dangerous or turbulent and also peaceful one way or the other. And so as each generation refuses to uphold or maintain the faith once given to the saints, like Jude warned in verses three and four, said, I found it necessary to write to you, clergy Anglican kanji of the province of Lagos, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Send this way to you, clergy, for certain men have crept in on notice, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation on godly men who turned the grace of our God into loudness and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we pick, why do we choose this team? You see, when a generation does not defend the faith, the result is chaos, turbulence, as we are witnessing all over the world today. We are in the world of oppressive, oppressive regime whose leaders don't fear God. They have created for us war fierce and endless poverty for the people. Now, my observation is that of when we, when we look at Nigeria, don't let us just go far. If we look at the world, we will find ourselves in more trouble. But let us look at Nigeria. Our leaders, either political leaders, traditional leaders, and of course, church leaders. And we have some of us today that don't want to do anything with God. Sometimes we make fun of God. Why we exalt human beings? Why we exalt position and play less on God? We are in the generation that has made money, power, position, authority, our gods. We have found joy in satanic courts. In fact, the moment anyone showed interest in any leadership today, be it political, traditional, even church leadership, the first advice is for him to find a court, secret court to join, so that he will receive Ah. So the result is what we are witnessing today. We are in a generation where, like Jews, some bishops, some GOs, pastors, clergy, church founders, not only crept into the church, but they are now taking control of the larger congregation with wrong on biblical, on ethical doctrines, teachings and practices. With this, almost the whole counsel of God has changed. Now let me caution here that this change is either change for better or for worse. Because not everything that have changed from the beginning can be condemned totally. But my emphasis will be on areas that have been destroyed or almost destroyed. And the consequences we now experience. And how, as Anglican priests, what is our duty to right all the wrong? Or the one that is already good to make it better? Psalm 33, verse 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, 
the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. For instance, let's look at Israel. God chose Israel as the nation through which he will bring the promised Messiah. But if you read Deuteronomy chapter 18, and I want us to look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. If you look at verse 15, God says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren, him you shall hear. Him you shall hear. And if you read Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, or Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 to 16, God is, was promising the nation of Israel that he will provide for them a Messiah. He promised to provide, bless, and protect the Israelites if they followed him. But the Old Testament gives us a heartbreaking details of what happened after this promise. And I want us to take time as we check the reason why we are where we are today. As we have it through Ezekiel, prophet Ezekiel. And I want us also to open our Bible to the book of prophet Ezekiel is in the Old Testament. Let me quickly read from verse 5, and I want you to take notes. It said, Thus says the Lord God, this is Jerusalem, and this is Nigeria, this is Church of Nigeria, this is your parish, this is your diocese. I have set her in the midst of the nations and the countries all around her. She has rebelled against my judgment by doing wickedness more than the nations and against my statutes more than the countries that are all around her. For they have refused my judgment and they have not walked in my status. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have multiplied disobedience more than the nations that are all around you, have not walked in my status, nor kept my judgment, nor even done according to the judgment of the nations that are all around you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, indeed, I, even I, am against you. And we execute judgment in your midst in the sight of the nations. And I will do among you what I have never done, and the like of which I will never do again, because of all your abominations. Therefore, fathers shall eat their sons in your midst, and sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgment among you, and all of you who remain, I will scatter to all the winds. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, surely because you have defied my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all your abomination, therefore, I will also diminish you. My eye will not spare, nor will I have any pity. One third of you shall die of the pestilence, COVID, and be consumed with famine in your midst, food scarcity. And one third shall fall by the sword all around you, and I will scatter another third to all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thus shall my anger be spent, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be avenged, and they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have spent my fury upon them. And so you have many nations today that receive directly this cause. Their antiquities today are no longer to be found. For instance, 
what God said about Edom in Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 17 to 22. And I want you to read when you get back home. There will not be time. And see the judgment on Edom. Assyria is also, when you read Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. Sodom, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 20, she said, And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sins is very grave. In fact, you remember, that was when Abraham started negotiating with God. God, please, what if we have, where did he start it? It started from, is it 50? Up to, until 10. Say, God, I think I've done my best. And Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. What about Babylon? In Jeremiah chapter 51, just read the whole of 51, all wiped out according to the Bible. And there remains no one of the Hittites in Exodus 22, 23, Moabites, Philistines, all have received the judgment of God because of disobedience. Brethren, the God of yet years is the same God. Yes, you may say we are in the generation of grace, which we proclaim. We must be very careful not to abuse God's grace. For Paul himself, in letter, his letter to Romans chapter 6, verses 1 up to 2, 8, says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And quickly, he answered, emphatically and recently, it says, God forbid. And so at this conference, we are concerned with the imminent judgment that is dangling upon our nation and nations of the world. We must therefore talk about it, engage ourselves, as we will start engaging ourselves as from today. And most importantly, in Nigeria, we are preparing for another election, knocking the door. And so when you look at these changes in Nigeria or the world, we live in a society of social injustice, and we are lamenting like Habakkuk in his own days. If you read Habakkuk chapter 1, if you read from verses 1 to 4, it says, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And you will not hear. I will cry in Nigeria. I am sure you are crying. Are you not crying? I cannot hear you. Talk to me. I can imagine how many days of the week that you engage in crying unto the Lord. Vigils, 21 days fasting and prayer. The question is, is it getting better? Now, if it's not getting better, are you saying God has not heard your prayer? That was the lamentation of Habakkuk. He will cry out unto you, violence, and you will not save us. Cause us see trouble. Why do you show us iniquity? Plundering and violence are before us. There is strife and contentious arises. The law is powerless. Is law powerless in Nigeria? Powerless. Justice never goes forward for the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment precedes. And so this lack and deliberate emancipation of sound justice within our society has overcome, informed a pathological situation, a situation where due to the absence of deliberate or neglect of the need for social justice in the accumulation of wealth, distribution of wealth and resources, as well as social, economic, and political relationship among the people, the rich are becoming richer, 
why the less privileged are becoming more disadvantaged. The social implication and effect is the impulse by the rich or the privileged to see or use corruption to accumulate more wealth, resources, and power in a just social, economic, and political exchange in their bid to maintain the unjust social, economic, and political system. Why the poor and the less privileged tends to see and use the same corruption. Because while we are looking at the oppressors, while we are looking at the rich oppressing the poor, unfortunately, the poor are also oppressing themselves. So there is a leveler. Do me, I do you. Go to the markets, those you consider to be the poor, peasant, traders, you see them also oppressing. All means to accumulate their own share of the social wealth. This is chiefly because national security objectives and corruption are two parallel lines. And that is the reason for this conference. And so what is the evil? I discovered that the reason for this, apart from social injustice, you know in Nigeria now, when you go to court, you may probably know who will come with go and you are free. You almost know, depending on either the position, the weight. If I just of recent something happened, somebody was killed in the hotel and all that and all that, and oh, there was an outcry. But what do we hear later? No case. So when you are, when you are, your substance, your position determine the type of justice that you get. And when you now go to the evil of social media. Social media, God gave social media or internet facilities for us as a gift to further create more pleasure, more comfort. But what do we have today? As much as social media has brought the whole world into a global village, though through, okay, through which communication is now made easier for those who hunger for knowledge, have more than enough, yet it has often been referred to as satanic box, where criminals are bred. The negative effect of the use of internet gadgets by our youth is better imagined. Unfortunately, there is no legislative control. Both the old and the young are in the clueless world of the internet. COVID-19, Falaba, you know what it has caused. The negative effects of the COVID-19 war would take more than a century to conquer. The church has been the worst hit. To some now, physical fellowship is unnecessary. It's no longer necessary. I don't know what happened in other dioceses, but in our own diocese, we now record fear and fewer. They prefer now to sit in their comfort zone and listen to different junks that are coming from either the radio or the television. For them to come to Bible study, for them to come and worship, they will tell you, after all, don't need the COVID-19. When you close the door to the church, we didn't die. God answered our prayers. So it's becoming a, well, say, a reality to our members now that you don't need to come to church. And so the effect of it is better imagined. That is why some of you, you have developed hypertension because you cannot pay assessment. 
But this also has caused we who are pastors spiritual laziness. Some who relied on media, preachers, today we discover that some of us are no longer original because we also are becoming too weak. We live in a generation of a literal fraud. We cannot choose your choice. Sometimes before the election result is declared, you already know the winner. The election of traditional leaders, like I've said, is coming fraudulent also. In the past, you know after this king, you know the next family. You even already know the next king. But today, you will only know the present king. You will not know the next one. Even in our churches today, who are who are qualified to be Babai Jo? Who are who are qualified to be recognized as the church elders? And so we are in a changing world where parents also has no time to train a child, either in the way of the Lord or give them moral training. No wonder teenagers are now engaged in so many evils, whereas the Bible commands that we should train a child in the way he should go, according to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. I also look at the evils that is going on in our schools. You remember when the missionary came, they established schools, colleges, and the greatest havoc, and I will continue to say it, that the greatest evil this country have done to the church or done to this society is taking over our schools. A school that was built to produce future leaders, moral, academic excellence, it was taken over, and what is the result today? We have succeeded in breeding cultists, racial killers, armed robbers, bandits, kidnappers, thugs, get rich quick. No wonder we have lazy teachers today, mushroom schools, on thoughtful policies, lack of care for teachers. The, chair, the church also is also a corporate. They have worked some church leaders some doctrines, some teachings, belief has done in our generation is unimaginable. The house of prayer and deliverance are now breeding ritualists, spiritual vagabonds, liars, fake miracles, celebrating mediocrity, pursuing worldliness, prosperity, and compromising the faith. The church that is charged to correct the ears is now championing ungodly behavior. What a mess. Now, what then is the responsibility of Anglican priests? Now, the first question is, who should be Anglican priests? And my answer is, is someone who is called by God into the ordained ministry. But unfortunately, I'm sorry, or I cannot be sorry on the pulpit. <laughs> there are some of us, indeed, we are not called. We called ourselves. And so when we refer to Anglican priests, it's not just all of us who put on white robes. It's not all of us who leads in Anglican church, but those who are, first of all, called by God into their day ministry. That is, those who are ordained by a bishop to give service to the church in Anglican church. Anglican priest is one who is a Christian, who believe in the word of God, who preach the word of God and live by it. An Anglican priest is a teacher, a preacher, a counselor, a prayer warrior, a prophet, 
a servant leader, a minister of the word of God, trained and ordained by an Anglican bishop. He is a pastor and a shepherd. And so Anglican priests are the custodian of religion and morality. In line with the missionaries that brought Christianity to Nigeria, who made religious and moral education compulsory to all students, which of course assisted in no small measure in the reduction of social vices and crime rates in those days. Our leaders should therefore ask for more of our schools to be returned to us. And those of us having diocesan colleges or party schools to go back to base and make those schools a model for godliness, for moral teachings, and for academic excellence. Correction for any society start from ability to pass correct knowledge. Our clergy should develop interest in teaching even in the primary school. In those days, we have archdeacons, canons, who are inspectors to the schools. And I remember every Monday morning, the pastor, our clergy will come to the assembly, is the one to conduct service, to check your fingernails, to check if you took your bath that morning, to check if you attended the choir practice during the week, all this builds us to what we are today. We must go back. This is an age where students will gather in the primary school to beat up their teachers. This is the generation where you discipline a child. The next thing is the parents will take you to court. You may even from there go to jail just because you want to the process of developing the child to become somebody in life. Paul wrote us again in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. He said, go preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching and teachings, where are the prophets like Jeremiah? Where are the prophets like Isaiah? Where are the prophets like Amos? Where are primates Akiola? Where are primates Undukuba? Where are some of people like our provincial bishops? You need to listen to our charge as synod, challenging, charging, correcting the government. We should all at our own small level speak out. You are a prophet. And if you are not yet a prophet that can prophesy and can see beyond the present, receive that anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to lead our members more than ever before to God. Preach the word. Don't compromise the word of God. Some of us, by the time you want to preach the word and you see somebody in your congregation that if you preach it, maybe you'll be challenged or maybe the envelope after service you will lose. And yet you close your mouth. Because you close your mouth, you are also part of the contributors to the changing world that is going into part cushion. Anglican priests are noted for preaching salvation. In the past, government do attend um, churches to listen to the truth. But today, because you speak more of truth, they are no longer coming. There are so many heresies, bad and evil doctrines, perversion. Different at different degrees. There are too much worldliness in the church in our own churches and other churches. Just listen to some of the music we play nowadays. Prayer styles, 
see, we Anglican, we have abandoned our own style of communicating with God. We have, we have, we now pray. We want to pray like them because the way, because their way of prayer fetch more. We now commercialize prayer. That is not our way. Preaching style today. The way you preach in your when you are in how many of us attended a seminary? Only two. <laughs> okay, how many of us attended the Manuel College? Okay, that's the seminary. <laughs> so, brothers, as I round up, Anglican priests should be modest, disciplined, cautious. Humble, teachable, set good examples to follow. We have integrity to keep. We are not roadside priests. We are baked. We are trained. Some may go to anywhere to obtain their ordination, but in Anglican Church, we are original. And that we must keep. Maintain your Anglican heritage. Avoid wrong limitation, no matter the commercial gain it might be. You must study the word of God diligently and know the mind of God and declare it to the people raw. Avoid copy and paste. Be original. Invest in knowledge. We must engage in aggressive evangelism, mission, and discipleship. This is our core duties and mandate. It is the Great Commission. Let us engage in fervent prayers with fasting. This is the source of our power and authority. Pray in season and out of season. As we pray, so also we must lead our members to praise God. Those you imitate are now coming back to you. I, I remember there was a time where they pray, where in the service, and I saw one of them, the mitre was as high, the mitre was touching the ceiling. <laughs> the mitre. I'm not joking, this, 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 this is stupid. And this is where you ordinarily, you wear ordinary cassock. But for him, for us to know that it's a, it's a geo, and to put on the habit of a geo, the mitre was touching, and uh, he was trying to avoid the ceiling, removing it. So if they are now copying us, why do you now go to, why, why, why do you now go to pray like them? You want to prophesy when you see nothing. <laughs> Some of us don't have the gift of, of speaking in tongues. It's a gift. And that's where I understand the Bible. I love it. I want to speak the tongue, in tongue. I tried, but I couldn't flow. I don't want to just. So if you don't have it, I'm still praying. Maybe before I retire, God will still give me. But don't go to the college of speaking. It's a gift. So if you don't have it, don't say because somebody is speaking in gift, because that is the teaching now. If you don't speak in tongues, you are not a candidate of heaven. No, I can tell you that. Speaking in tongues is not a license. The man who has just spoken in tongues may engage in other sin. Then this culture of laying hands and you fall by anointing, I think it's also a gift. Abisa, I don't know, you can correct me, but not now. <laughs> you see, when you... It's, it's a natural gift. If you have it, good luck to you. But you don't have it, don't push people down. Don't, 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 don't fake. Don't perform magic. And these are what is destroying our faith, destroying our church. Our church is noted for discipline. Our church is noted for... In, in fact... A Muslim will prefer 
his wife and his children to go to Anglican church than to any other church. Because he knows that you will bring the child and give it back to him well trained. And avoid celebrating the wicked in your church. Don't preach man, preach Christ. When you preach Christ, then the man will be saved. That is one of our responsibility. Teach them not to take any gratification for our politicians. They are not going about. Maybe they have visited your vicarage. If you take anything from politicians and sell your faith, you remember what Ezekiel said. God is going to abandon you. 2023 is knocking at the door. If any of you compromise, then you have a case to answer before God. Engage in programs that are kingdom friendly, not imitation or magic. If you don't have the gifts, don't try it so that God will not abandon you. I'm not sure you have seen people who engage in deliverance and the man and what is delivering the man from now descend on the deliverer. That is why if you don't have the gifts, don't try it. And some of you who engage in witchcrafts, magic or hoodoo, some of you practice black arts, occultism, divination, be careful because the judgment is coming it's not part of our culture in Anglican Church. We are plain. Even though the world has changed or is changing, God remains constant. His word never changed. His anointing or anointed servant remain the same. His priests should remain resolute. We are the light and the salt of the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously grant that your word which we have heard may inscribe inwardly in our hearts. Grant us the grace that we may not be mere hearers of your word, but doers also. May we bring glory and honor to your name in all that we do as you conform to us the image of your son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We may kneel or sit. People of God, let us begin to thank God for the word of God which we have just heard. Let's appreciate God for a message like this in a time like this. Let's thank God for the vision of our church fathers to organize this type of provincial clergy conference, the second edition of it, which we are gathered here for today. Let's thank God for the leadership of the church in our province, the archbishop of our province, and all the provincial bishops. Let's appreciate God for their lives. Let's thank God for his grace upon the church. At this time, let us thank God for all who have arrived from the different dioceses in our province. Let's thank God for a safe trip 
that the Lord has granted to everyone. Thank God for yourself whom the Lord has brought here and talk to God that God might come in here today and for these three days will not be in vain. We have heard the word of God, Anglican clergy in a changing world. Lord, is there a way I have lost my calling? Is there a way I have changed that may lead to decay in ministry? Lord, restore me. Lord, redirect my focus. Redirect my path to you, Lord, that I may do that which will bring glory to your name. Pray that there will be positive change in our lives, our ministry, our various churches, ashtikiris, dioceses, and the province, as well as the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion at large. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for the church and for the word, word, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Henry, a primate, Humphrey, our Archbishop, and all our provincial bishops, as well as all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your law and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, bless and guide our rulers, especially Muhammadu, our president, Baba Jide, governor of Lagos, Dapo, governor of Ogun State, Give wisdom to all in authority and direct these and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that people may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give grace to us, especially as clergy, of the ecclesiastical province of Lagos Anglican Communion, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, according to your promises, grant us with them a share in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, let's commit the remaining activities of this conference into the hands of God. Let's pray that God will take absolute control Let's ask him that only him and he alone will be glorified in this particular conference, in our lives individually, in our ministerial assignments, and in the church of God. Let's pray that God Almighty himself we bring the positive change that we need into our lives, into our ministry. Ask God what you want him to do, particularly for you. 
the Lord is here with us and his presence is with us. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Lord, in your mercy, rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand for the peace? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace. The offertory hymns as on page 22 and 23.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to offer. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. And through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now at the beginning of our conference, so we ask, Lord, that you will be present with us every step of the way. That you will honor us, Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit. And that by our gathering together, we may continue to enjoy true and rich fellowship one with the other. And by our gathering, let your church be blessed for the glory of your holy name. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink of it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest is our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink this holy gift in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and in heaven, we worship your Father Almighty in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Together, 
we do not presume to come to your table. Merciful Lord, trust in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Therefore, draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Those in the gallery will be attended to in the gallery. Please don't come down. We will uh, bring the elements to you in the gallery.
Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. The Lord be with you. Shall we kneel to pray? Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so we have the courage to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The prayer of thanksgiving together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And may the peace of God with passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of the eternal trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Please sit. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Before we invite the director of uh, programs to give announcement, I want to, on behalf of the planning committee, again appreciate the presence of our George Prelate, starting from the president of the service, the Right Reverend Akin Pelu Johnson. Thank you very much for coming. Can we celebrate our brother? We have again the Right Reverend Dr. B.J. Registered at the ME, the Bishop of the Badagri and the Dean of the Lagos Anglican Seminary, and my first parishioner. I have to eulogize him so that uh, before he leaves, he must um, shed some weight for his bishop. And our uh, father is here, all the way from Egba West. You know him, registered old Jew, Yoruba. The Right Reverend Samuel Ogudeji, you are welcome, sir. Thank you for coming. And. Uh, Egba uh, Ile. We are changing that now. I worry. No, go to history. Go to history. Or Badag Whichever one. So we welcome our dear brother, the Right Reverend Dr. Emmanuel. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. We want to celebrate our choir. Thank you all the way from our Savior. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, you are from St. John's, Aroloya. Aroloya. Ah. Thank you. The Is the director, the director, 
the post of director. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my lord. We appreciate you, sir, for the way that you have been conducting this program since inception. We are grateful to you. Um, the right Reverend Dr. Aki J. Atere. Can we put our hands together for him? Ekushesa, thank you very much, sir. And on behalf of our dear father in the Lord, the Most Reverend Dr. Humphrey Bamishibi Ulumakaye and Mama Lagos, Mama Province, Professor Mrs. Motunrayo Ulumakaye, we welcome you all to Faith Plaza, Archbishop and Mrs. Ademowo's Resource Center. You are all welcome, and we are grateful to them that they have given us everything here free of charge. But we still have some other places that are not given totally. So, but nearly everything, more than 90%. And also, through his magnanimity, uh, the, um, the program organizers will have their meals at the, um, at the dining every day till we finish this program. So we are grateful to him and Mama. May the good Lord continue to bless them. <laughs> and also, we want to say thank you to our dear Father in the Lord, the Right Reverend Akin Pelu Johnson, and Mama Mainland. They have given us Archbishop Akinde's Resource Center free of charge as well. We are grateful, sir. Thank you very, very much. May the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Please check page 18 on the program and see the rules there. We will continue page 18 of the book for the program. We will continue with the registration immediately after the service. So if you have not registered, please make sure that you are registered. And after the registration, make sure that you put on your tag. It is for identification. Uh, we are having some security officials who can accost you that why are you not putting on this? So if you are not putting on this, it shows that you are not part of, his, of us. Please make sure that you put on the tag. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in the Lord has thanked our papas who are present and those that are absent. But I still want to say this, that I want to say thank you for advertising sending congratulatory messages and goodwill messages concerning this program. You have boosted our finances. Thank you very, very much. We are grateful indeed. Uh, by 2 p.m. to 3.15, there will be lunch and rest. But the thing is that if you want to eat, is pay as you eat. Or pay as you go, or grab and go, whichever one. So the vendors, accredited vendors, are at CMS Grammar School. And we have accredited vendor on this grant at the Faith Plaza, uh, Mrs. Adekola and others. They are there. They have set the table for you, and goodness and mercy, we continue to follow you in Jesus' name. The first lecture starts by 3.15. Please endeavor to be there by 3.10 p.m. at the auditorium. And please, we are sorry for all these inconveniences. Thank you for accepting us as we are. God bless you in Jesus' name. We are online through Lagoon Radio and Lagoon Television. 
These are the media outfit of the Diocese of Lagos. The deacons should please see Venerable J.S. Adejube for briefing after the service. Uh, the deacon, please note this here in the chapel. The choir, thank you very, very much. We greet and say thank you to all the committee members for their efforts, putting everything together. Kudos to you. We are grateful to you. Baba, thank you for leading us. We are grateful indeed. And the officiating ministers, thank you so, so much. God bless you. If there's any other thing, we'll tell you through the uh, media. Yes, I just want to say that uh, if you need anything or you want to acquire of anything, Anyone you see put on this reflective jacket, either, what's the color of this? Orange. Orange, or which other one? So, you are, by the time I remove this now, I'll put my own on, you are free to come to me. Especially, we discovered that some of you have still been the accommodation challenges. Please let us know so that we can sort it out. Thank you. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.